on the back of Algebra 2, worksheet 23.2, number 13, we're asked to factor each expression. And this one is a little bit weird because you've got all these different variables and you got numbers in front, and from this pattern it shows us that we're going to have a common factor. So this is going to be a little bit weird, but <clears throat> not as bad as what it looks like. Now the first thing we want to do, since we know it's got a common factor, we look at the variables first. And I see an x squared here on this first term, but there's no x's here. And here I see y squared and z squared, but there's no y or z here which means they don't have a variable in common. So this common factor up front is just going to be a constant term. It's going to be a number by itself, no variables. Now the zeros on the ends of these, I have 160 and 10. Now I'm concentrating on just these numbers. The zeros tell me that 10 goes into both. So if I divide 10 into both, means I'm going to factor out a 10. So my f that will be in the final answer, but if I factor out 10, it'll give me 16x squared minus 10 divided by 10 is 1, so just that y squared z squared by itself. Now I've got to factor this thing right here. So the 10 is already out front, that's fine. Now I've got to factor this. Now hopefully it's one of those nice patterns where it's either a difference of two squares or it's the sum of two, two squares. Here it's a difference, and I think I can take the square root of all this stuff. The square root of 16x squared is 4x. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of z squared is z. So this is difference of two squares, which means I just need one term to be plus, one to be minus. So my factored form is 10 times quantity 4x plus yz times 4x minus yz.